Hello and welcome to a new video about Prometics. This time we are going to start about the working elements. The most important working element in Prometics is the standard cylinder. There are different types of cylinders. We can distinguish between two different working principles. There is the single, so-called single acting cylinder and the so-called double acting cylinder. What is the difference? I will try to show you. It's not that complicated, however, you know, th there's a difference. I will show you now a drawing of a cylinder I made. It's not a technical drawing, it just should show you how those things usually look like. I wanted, I wanted to have it look like just how it really does, yeah? almost. So this is a cylinder you see here. Huh? There is the cylinder itself. Okay. There is the there is the piston rod, and this piston rod can go out or can go in yeah, to a certain amount. Yeah? So this is what a cylinder is doing. It can go out and can go in. Yeah? So how is this working inside? Let's have a look inside and cut this open. This here would be a single acting cylinder. You see now the casing is cut open. Here you see the piston. Yeah? Here you see the rod. And we also see this spring here. Okay? So if we move out the rod a little bit, this string is going to be crushed. Yeah? Crunched. And so if we get in pressure here at this opening, yeah, it will simply move the piston up to here and the, the, the spring will be loaded. Now the spring has quite a lot of tension. If I now let the pressure here remove, the spring will unload, yeah, it will get longer and will take the piston with it. I, also ha I always have to update the drawing. Huh? This is a single acting cylinder. Okay? So actively, with the help of pressure, huh? I will only move in one direction. In one direction only. Huh? In one direction, I really can produce force, I can produce work. In the other direction, in this case inwards, it's just the spring which is moving this inside. Maybe an outside force, so if we apply here a force from the outside, will also help due to some gravity or whatever. But in this direction, inwards direction, there cannot be any work done. Because I cannot make the, fo the, the, the force of the spring very strong, because then I would not get it out clear. Yeah? So the force of the spring is just to bring it back. Single acting cylinder. Only one, one way to apply real force. Okay. This is a so-called piston cylinder, because it's has a piston separating one side from the other. Okay, so there's the pressure side and there's no pressure side. However, I need here, of course, I need here some ventilation hole. Okay, I cannot just because I need to get rid air of the air on this side of the cylinder. Because here is air inside. If I want to move the cylinder in this direction, yeah. I get, have to get rid of the air on this side, and this is a ventilation hole. There's usually nothing attached, it's just maybe a filter element filtering the air. Synth filter element, something like this. So this is, this is how this looks like. Single acting cylinder. It must not be a piston. It must not be a piston. There might also be a membrane. So I will show you, I will show you uh, here, yeah. 
So there might be the case that we are not uh, having, having a real piston, but we have some sort of casing like this. Here we have the attachment where we can add air or no air. Should have been symmetrical. Then there is a membrane. This membrane is flexible, huh? flexible membrane, and this will be here. Okay. And then there is the other part of the casing. Yeah. This is this membrane is clamped here, yeah. and the other part of the casing maybe looks like this. Should have been also symmetrical. Yeah. Here, is the rod. Yeah. Here is some dish-like thing. Yeah. And, here is a spring also. Something like this. Yeah. Okay. And if I apply here now air, this membrane will bend to the other side. Okay, because I applied here and the dish will be moved here. The spring is tightened yeah, and we, we move it out here. Yeah. So here what is separating the pressure side from the non-pressure side is not a piston, it's a membrane. This is why it's called membrane cylinder. Okay. This is used if we only have a small, a small movement way, yeah. like for instance brake system and, and trucks, something like this, membrane cylinder. So there are several, uh, several designs. Single acting cylinder. Double acting cylinder looks a little bit different. Okay, double acting cylinder. We'll switch the configuration now. Looks like this. Yeah. See, there is also, in this case, there is also a piston. Let's zoom a little bit in. There's also a piston. Yeah. From the outside, pretty much looks the same. The difference is that we can move this a little bit further. Yeah. Why? Because if we cut it open, you see there is no spring inside. So the spring does not need additional space somewhere. At this, at this end of the cylinder. So, now we have a two-way approach. If we apply here at this connector, if we apply here the pressurized air and relieve air and relieve air at this side, so here is now can the air can get out, this cylinder will move in this direction until it reaches the end position. Okay. If I now open here and add pressure here, the cylinder will move in the other direction. And in both directions we can apply reinforce because in both directions we are using the air pressure. Yeah? In both directions we can apply work. Yeah? This is why this thing is called a double acting cylinder. Okay? Double acting cylinders can apply work, can do work in both directions. Okay? However, there is no default, default position. If there is no pressure at all, it will simply stay where it is or maybe because of gravity slowly slide in one direction. Okay? 
So this is double acting cylinder. You need to take into account yeah, that because on this side of the piston, yeah, I have all this area where the pressure can apply. Mm -hmm. On this side of the piston, I have only this ring area where the pressure can apply because on this side we have the rod as well. Yeah? So in this direction I have a bigger area, in this direction I have a smaller area. Since the applied force is uh, depending on the area, the bigger the area is, the more force with the same pressure of medium I can apply, the force in this direction is higher than in this direction. Clear. Yeah? Because if the, the size, the pressure is the same, the size of the application field where the pressure can be applied is small, so there is less force in this direction. Okay? So this is one cylinder which, which is uh, double acting. Yeah? And now I show you as well uh, one possible difference because you know at this cylinder yeah, if we are applying here pressure this will simply book move and then back be at the end yeah there are little little uh, dampers yeah which will simply be rent from metal to metal yeah they are made of some I don't know silicon something like this yeah it's elastic material so it will but it will quite hammer at the end Bing, bing, yeah, it will travel quite fast. To prevent this, this rough stopping of the cylinder at the end, we can apply damping. Now I switch to the damping application. You will see it looks almost the same. A lot of parts are the same. Also with the single acting cylinder, this is typical, typical way of designing things. If you want to produce things very cheap, try to make things standardized. Uh, try to make things and only defer in the, in the areas you really need. Uh, then there is the difference. A lot of parts are simply the same, so you can, you can use them in both. And if you're producing a high amount of, of things, uh, of the same part, it's usually getting cheaper. Yeah, than to make a special part for every cylinder. Okay, so where's the difference? The difference is here, this so-called damping, damping pistons. Yeah, what on both sides? Yeah, and these things here, they are also different. Because what is happening? Yeah, let's have a look. If the piston is now traveling, at some point in time, the damping cylinders, uh, the damping pistons, will get into this into the ceiling here, uh, and then book, suddenly here is sealed. The air cannot get out through this hole anymore. The remaining air inside this area here, it has to travel at this small hole, and here there is. An adjustable screw and I can select how much gap is between this cone and this hole. Yeah? So the air has to travel here through a small gap. This means the air cannot get that fast out so we'll travel up to here very fast and then we'll reach this point and then it's only damped until we reach the mechanical limit. Okay, So this damp, this is a cushioning. Yeah, it's called cushioning. Yeah. So we will cushion the movement at the end. Yeah. End position cushioning. On the other side, it pretty much works the same. There is also done slowly. Yeah. This is how this looks like. If we take a closer look. Ooh, this was the wrong button. If we take a closer look at the difference, you see there is the damping, damping piston and this hose and this screw which is applied and without damping, it simply looks the same. However, this piston is not there. And also the hole is not there, but everything else is the same, even the screw is the same. Yeah. 
So this is a double acting cylinder. Okay. Now I'll show you also the, the symbols and so on. Yeah. Uh, let's switch back to our sheet here. Yeah. So single acting cylinder. The symbol of a single acting cylinder is rather easy. Looking like this. There's the piston. There's the rod. And then there is drawn the spring. Yeah? And here's the connector. That's a single acting cylinder. Okay? And the double acting cylinder, accordingly, yeah, looks pretty much the same because it does also in reality. Draw the piston, draw the rod, and this time we have two connectors. Easy, right? Symbol of a double acting cylinder. Well, uh, her, uh, there's also, there are different types of double acting cylinders. Uh, there are different types of double acting cylinders. So, uh, for instance, There are cylinders where they're looking like this. Ooh, already made it. Two cylinders back to back. One slightly longer, one slightly shorter. And then if I move this here, the total length, huh? total length. If I move this out, huh? it is getting longer by this travel length of this smaller cylinder. If I move this out, it's getting longer by the travel length of the bigger cylinder. And if I move both out, I can add both travel lengths. Huh? So can, I can have not two positions in and out, I have four positions, so short, this out, this out, and both out. Four different length, defined length I can have. Yeah? Multi-position cylinders. One possibility. Yeah? And then there are also cylinders out there which look like this. Piston inside. And the rod is traveling on both sides out. Yeah? So there's a continuous rod through the whole cylinder. Also a possibility. Yeah. And, you know, since there might be the issue that you want to have a higher force. Yeah. You want to have a higher force. Usually you have to grow in diameter because you need more area, piston area to apply higher force with the same pressure. Yeah. However, Sometimes it's simply not possible to increase the position area. Yeah? So there are also things out there which look like this. Longer. Two chambers, same size. Two pistons. And then there is the rod. Through. So now, if I apply here pressure and here pressure, this will travel to the outside and I have this area and this ring area here. Yeah. I added area, however, I have now longer cylinders. Yeah. So I can tandem cylinder, it's called tandem cylinder, because they are two traveling both directions. Hmm. Tandem cylinders might be used if there is no issue in length of the cylinder, but in diameter of cylinder and you need higher forces. Also double acting principle because it can also apply work in the other direction. So this is the most important working element, uh, cylinders. Next video we're going to talk about the parts of the cylinders. We will talk about 
what are the usual parts inside there. Because it's simply that important, I will show you also at my drawing uh, how these parts are called. Yeah. For this time, for the basic principles, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.